Um, thank you, Chairman Durbin, and um, thank you to our witnesses today. Um, we are um, here to have a uh, hearing about uh, January 6th and about the threat of domestic violent extremism. Uh, in my view, um, today um, we are gathered because um, just last week we commemorated uh, the anniversary of one of the darkest days in modern American history. Um, on January 6th, um, I noted, and I, I, I want to repeat today, uh, just how grateful I am for law enforcement officers, the Capitol Police, the Metropolitan Police, members of the National Guard from the region and the country, uh, and others who protected all who work and serve in the Capitol. Um, the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office reports that the angry mob that um, broke into and assaulted the Capitol assaulted more than 140 law enforcement officers uh, during that day, during that terrible day, during that insurrection. Uh, there were five officers who lost their lives as a result of that day, and they and their families um, remain in my prayers to this day a year later. Uh, those officers didn't come to work that day as uh, Republicans or Democrats, as people from this state or that state, but simply um, as Americans responsible for working to keep all of us and our democracy safe. And they did their jobs so that later that night the entire Senate could reconvene in the chamber and do hours and certify the results of the 2020 election. So I think we owe it to those officers and their families and our American public to ensure that every extremist who committed an act of politically motivated violence that day is prosecuted. Um, we owe it to them that we ensure um, that we all learn and correct um, the, the failings, the flaws, the challenges in terms of intelligence or law enforcement, resources or planning um, that led to the events of January 6th. And we owe it to them to take seriously the ongoing threat that we face from domestic violent extremists. Domestic violent extremism also fuels threats to our national security from abroad. Uh, I serve on the Foreign Relations Committee. In the last year, I went to more than a dozen countries around the world. Democracy is under threat from nations uh, all around the world, and these are nations that have long looked to us or whose human rights advocates or democracy advocates or journalists have long looked to us as a model. As I've engaged uh, with leaders around the world, I've heard firsthand how the visible symbol of the storming of our capital on January 6th made foreign leaders doubt the durability of our democracy. Our adversaries have trumpeted January 6th as a humiliating sign of weakness and disarray, and our allies have seen it as a troubling sign of the fraying of our society and our democratic system. That's why it is so important for every senator to join our chairman today in continuing to condemn all violence and threats of violence used to advance political goals. Today's hearing is an important step in moving forward um, on the work to strengthen and heal our democracy. Um, so Mr. Olson, if I might uh, just first ask you, uh, I was encouraged to hear your testimony about uh, establishing a, a new unit that will combat domestic terrorism. Um, as the leader of the department's mission to combat terrorism whether uh, foreign or domestic, espionage, cybercrime, other threats to our national security, uh, would you agree that the violent assault on our capital on January 6th um, has undermined our standing abroad? I, I would certainly say, Senator, that, it, that what happened on January 6th has posed challenges in, in terms of our uh, status uh, as uh, a democracy. If you look across the country, I've had that conversation with foreign uh, uh, leaders in the, in the national security space. Um, that said, I, I think how we've responded to it can, and, and how we address domestic terrorism, again, pursuing acts of violence without regard to ideology stands as, a, as an example to the rest of the world. So you'd agree that a, a failure to adequately respond to that assault with um, fair, thorough, appropriate criminal investigation and prosecution, if we fail to respond, that would further undermine our standing as a model of democracy and, and thereby continue to weaken our standing in the world? I think, I think the world is watching how we respond to this threat and, and, it, will, and it can potentially affect our standing in the world. I would agree. Um, if I might, Mrs. Sanborn, uh, one last question. Um, I, I think, look, it's gravely concerning to me that there are some colleagues uh, of mine here in the Capitol, in the House, uh, as well as in the Senate that suggests that the mob that attacked the building on January 6th didn't include 
domestic violent extremists. But I think the facts are fairly clear. Um, the U.S. Attorney's Office for D.C. published a snapshot of the investigation. Uh, there were more than 75 individuals charged with using a deadly or dangerous weapon uh, or causing serious bodily harm to a police officer. And the 140 officers assaulted um, included 80 Capitol Police, 60 Metropolitan Police Department members. Mrs. Sanborn attacking police at the Capitol in order to prevent the certification of an election for an explicit political end pretty squarely fits within the definition of domestic violent extremism, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, thank you. And I see I'm out of time. Let me just say I, I'm hopeful um, that all of us in this body can put aside rhetoric and speak with one voice and unequivocally condemn politically motivated violence and threats of violence going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Coons. Senator Lee. 